Hello, this is lecture 24 in this series. This lecture will look at noise reduction. So when we occupy buildings, there will be times when sound in one room should be restricted from passing to another. Noise can be a nuisance between living spaces and bedrooms. Private conversations in one room might also be overheard in another. So it's important to consider how we block sound from one space to the next. This lecture is going to look at the principles of sound between rooms and the things that we can do to restrict its passage. So when we're talking about sound, we're really talking about all the things that can happen within occupation of houses. So this can be speech and radios and babies crying and snoring and banging around. The sort of normal things that we would have in houses. And the way that we occupy houses is much more complicated nowadays. We don't just use bedrooms for sleeping. They tend to be used for watching television or playing video games. So there's lots of activities which are going to generate sound. So firstly, if we look at airborne sound, sound from voices, the radio, crying children, is carried through the air, and when the sound hits a partition, some of the sound waves bounce back into the room, but some of it will transfer into the wall and through to the other side. So the sound waves hitting the partition are causing it to vibrate and act as a diaphragm. Airborne sound can also pass around the edges of walls and floors, so care needs to be taken when we detail these junctions between different elements, as even the smallest gap can allow noise to pass through. If you consider that air can get through a gap, then so can sound. And if we make a, a thin partition, a standard plasterboard wall with a timber stud, it's not the best thing at stopping airborne sound getting through. There's an air gap between it. The thickness of the plasterboard isn't substantial, so there's not a lot to stop sound passing through. A thicker wall, made of a denser material, such as brick or concrete block, will probably do a better job of restricting sound, but there is a catch, which we'll come to later. The other type of sound is impact sound, and that sound is a result from contact with a surface. So that can be footsteps on a floor, or hammering on a wall. An impact sound causes the wall or floor to vibrate, which creates a direct transmission of sound to adjoining rooms. An impact sound is more problematic when dealing with floors. Solid constructions or floors which use timber joists can provide a direct path for sound to travel down through the floor below. It's particularly a problem if there's a bare timber floorboard above. So if we look at a stud wall for impact sound, they provide pretty much a straight path right the way through the wall, through the plasterboard, through the stud, through the plasterboard at the other side. So a standard stud wall lacks the density of materials to deal with most impact sounds. Solid partitions are better than stud walls, but for large or heavy impacts, they will still allow sound to be transmitted. A method of isolating the impact from the wall would be best for reducing sound. And if we look at the building regulations under standard 5.2, they require that we should deal with sound between different rooms within a building. They recognise that there's a change in how we use buildings and they're looking for various design performance levels. And what they're really asking is that there's a reduction in sound from one room to the next. And these are governed by standards in a table. So between a room and a room, we have a separating partition and the, the value that they're looking for is a reduction of 40 dB, and between a floor it's 43 dB. The building regulations point towards a document produced by the Scottish Government called Example Constructions and Generic Internal Constructions, which has a number of different examples and ways for being able to reduce sound transmission between rooms in the form of partitions and floors. So the next few lectures we're going to look at partitions and floors in particular, and the ways that they can address the problems of noise. So in conclusion, there are a couple of key points to note. Airborne sound is sound produced by speech, radio, etc. Sound is carried through the air and can pass through low density constructions or around the sides of walls and floors. Impact sound is the sound that results from direct contact with a solid floor or wall. Walking, dropping objects and machinery can all produce impact sound. Dense materials can help block airborne sound and impact sound, but heavy impact can pass through solid materials. Isolating the source of impact sound from the construction can reduce the amount of noise transmitted, and standard constructions are available which provide the required reduction in sound. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, please let me know.